Autumn had arrived on the island of Sodor. It had been cool and windy. The air and the atmosphere were crisp. The environment put the engines in a great mood. One cold night, the engines were at the sheds. The wind whistled outside. Sure does seem eerie, said Henry. That wind gives off an uncomfortable feeling. Gordon chuckled. <laughs> First rain, and now wind. Henry, you always seem to have the slightest fear of the weather. I didn't say I was afraid, Gordon, he interjected. I said... I heard that there was a front coming in, interrupted James. I think you might want to head to your tunnel. It could protect you from the ghosts. James, all I said was... You know, Henry, interrupted Gordon again. I think that if Mother Nature herself came down to Earth, your boiler would burst in fright. James and Gordon laughed. Henry was cross. So were Pip and Emma. Henry was their friend. Excuse me, declared Pip. Whose dome flew off because he was trying to break a record? And the one who struggled up Gordon's hill because the wind was blowing leaves? Emma added. Gordon and James said nothing. It was so embarrassing to be reminded of their own mishaps. Besides, cut in Bear, Henry's a hero. I can prove that. He saved me from being straight on the line. If it weren't for him, I'd probably have been stuck for goodness knows how long. Henry smiled. Then a thought came to him that reminded him of the main line. On the subject of the main line, I saw a strange woman today. A woman? said Emma. Was she on the main line? Pip questioned, a little nervous. Goodness, no. But she was near us, though not too close to get hit. She was just staring into the tree line. She was so still, she was barely moving, if at all. Uh, what was she wearing? What? What was the woman wearing? Well, she was wearing a dress. It seemed like a dress from the 1910s. Why? Bear was silent. I believe you might have witnessed something of a scary story. A scary story? Henry considered. What do you mean? inquired Pip. Driver told me a story about a woman that seems similar to Henry's account. It's a little disturbing, if I may say so. Oh, we'd love to hear it, said Pip. Henry and Emma agreed. Bear chuckled. Gordon, James, you want to hear it? Sure. All right, the two said, a little uninterested. All right, then. It was back in World War I, and apparently, since I hadn't been built yet, Germany had temporarily invaded the island. Oh, I remember that. It was terrifying. I remember some soldiers tried shooting at our coaches. Anyways, women and children had been kidnapped, some slaughtered, others kept in captivity, until the Germans were all removed because of the armistice. One woman, however, had escaped, and a soldier had been in pursuit of her. Stop! He had told her to stop and come back, to which she refused. Halt! Or did each fair that has fire our opening? He told her to stop again, or he'd have to shoot. She again refused. Suddenly, NINE! The soldier had only meant to intimidate the woman, but not fire at her. He ran off before anyone came. A singer man found her lying on the ground, barely conscious. She had said something, but it was barely understandable. But what he could make out of it was... They took my eyes. She was later rushed to hospital, but succumbed to her wounds before she got there. Some engines say that she still wanders to find the man responsible. The silence in the sheds was deafening. 
That was quite an interesting story, said Henry, perturbed. And like you said, Pip replied, that was disturbing, finished Emma. Pah, said Gordon. The Germans weren't that cruel with us when they invaded. Gordon, yes they were. War's an awfully cruel time, and it just so happens that Bear's story proves my point. Yeah? What about the bullet? She was probably killed before the single man even got to her, put in James. Exactly. The story's rubbish. Now, if you don't mind, I have some rest to get for the express tomorrow, he declared firmly. Without another word, Gordon fell asleep, leaving a group of annoyed engines, except for James, to stay awake. Why is he always so stubborn? said Pip. Honestly. Henry sighed. <sighs> he's full of himself. He's thinking he's the king of the island and that no time of his needs to be wasted. I've known him for years. It's just what he does. The next day, Henry had to take a heavy goods train to the other end of the line. James puffed down to his coach's next week. Ooh. Watch out, scaredy boiler. Make sure the wind doesn't have you fly off the rails, he said cheekily. James laughed and set off for the big station. While Henry rolled his eyes. Rusty red scrap iron, he said to himself. At Knapford, James backed down onto the platform with his train. Gordon and Bear were there waiting to go with their trains. Take care on the line, you two. I heard that woman still lurking about. Just a suggestion. The whistle for the limited blew, and Bear set off. Gordon and James scoffed. I bet that woman that Henry saw was just a Taurus of some sort, insisted Gordon. Honestly, agreed James, it's absolute hogwash. He's just trying to scare us. Right, and I'm not having it, said Gordon as he left with the express. I'm not either, replied James. A few minutes passed by until James was finally able to set off. James was making great time as he flew down the countryside with his coaches. The wind whistled as he roared down the track. Then, he saw a man standing on the tracks with a gun in his hand. Stop! Yet the foot! He said something that James couldn't understand. Suddenly... <laughs> Thankfully, no one was hurt, though James, the driver, and fireman, and the passengers were given fright. James stopped by Tidmouth to let his passengers out. He felt disturbed. Toby was nearby shunting some trucks. They saw James's look. He was curious. What's up with you, James? Asked Toby. You look like you've just seen a ghost. I didn't see anything, Toby, said James. I'm just thinking about my coal amount. Toby looked at James's tender. Seems all right to me. Well, it goes down faster than you think, mind you, Toby. All right, then. Just trying to help, he said. And he went back to shunting. Guard's whistle blew, and James set off once again. He seemed irritated with Toby, but deep down he was dreadfully nervous. What if Bear's story is actually true? He said to himself. Oh, what am I saying? It's bogus. That evening, James arrived back at the sheds. He tried to forget about it, 
but deep down, he was still thinking about the soldier he had seen. Fat Controller arrived and walked up to James. James, Henry will be unavailable to take the Flying Kipper, as the Vickerstown Bridge is being difficult and is under repair as we speak. Sir, please don't tell me. I decided that you, James, are to pull the Flying Kipper tomorrow morning. James groaned. <sighs> yes, sir. Good. I must be off for supper. Goodbye. And he hurried away. Great. Smelly goods, especially the flying kipper of all trains. Ugh. At three o'clock, James backed down onto his train, grumbling. Can't believe I had to pull up this train this time of night, James groaned. Come on, old boy. Let's just get this over with. His driver insisted. They waited and waited. It was only a few minutes, but to James, it felt like ages. Come on, come on, hurry up! Finally, the guard's lamp shone green and the train set off. The next morning, the firelighter had come to start off the engine's day. Gordon was just getting ready when he saw James coming down the line. Gordon chuckled. <laughs> I bet he smells terrible. James puffed onto the turntable and was turned to his berth. He slowly puffed in. Gordon was about to tease him until he saw James' face. James was pale, his eyes were wide, and he looked horrified. Gordon was confused. Uh, are you alright, James? James, is everything okay? He said once again. A mutter came. She... She... Gordon's driver and fireman had arrived. Come on, Gordon. We've got work to do. He pulled the throttle and Gordon set off. He kept looking at James, confused. Gordon backed down onto the express, still bewildered about James. He saw Bear over by the platform. Uh, Bear? Yeah? Something seems strange about James. He seems to be frightened by something from the Kipper this morning, Gordon noted. He was just looking straight ahead without saying anything. He looked like he was mad. Bear pondered. You think that he saw that woman? Gordon's face fell. No, of course not, he said strongly. But something must have really frightened him if he's barely saying anything. It could be something else, remarked Bear. But that woman... Bother that woman, snapped Gordon as he set off with the express. Bear was taken aback, but then again, he was only joking.
Gordon thundered down the line with the express. He was still contemplating until something caught his attention. Near the tree line stood a woman who was as still as a statue. What on earth is she doing? thought Gordon. I can't be the only one seeing that. Later that day, Gordon had arrived at Vickerstown with the Express. Gordon went into a siding. Soon enough, he fell asleep. He was woken up a few hours later, ready to go back home. He drowsily backed down onto the train. Soon enough, the guard's whistle blew, and Gordon set off. Gordon eventually picked up speed as he traveled down the main line. He had gone through Henry's tunnel, and came out, when... Driver, fireman, please tell me you two heard that. How could we not, Gordon? Yeah, somebody just used a firearm. Something ominous is going on here. Uh, excuse me, miss. Are you lost? Miss, would you like some directions? Uh, hello? Oh, oh. Reverse driver! Oh no! My valve! Oh, I'm stuck! No! No! S stay away! Stay away from me! Next morning, Henry had arrived back from the mainland. He puffed back into his berth and saw Gordon. Like James, Gordon was as white as a ghost and had a blank expression on his face. What's up with you, Gordon? remarked Henry. Gordon muttered. Uh, I... No eyes. Henry was confused. What? No eyes? 
What are you on about? Bear looked to Gordon. No eyes. Gordon, did you see? Yes. It's all right. You're safe, dear engine. She can't hurt you, said Bear soothingly. Gordon's mouth turned into a little smile. Thank you, Bear. And I'm sorry. Apology accepted. And I'm sorry to you too, Henry. M me too, said James. Who? Oh, that's all right. Your jokes honestly gave me a laugh inside. I accept your apologies as well, said Henry merrily. I guess we should have listened to you, Bear, said Gordon. Bear chuckled, and soon enough, they all started work. <laughs>